Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by the Chrome Soft Golf Ball from Callaway. Hello, I'm Anna Jackson, and this is your Golf Central update. Well, let me introduce you to Kip Popert, who is currently the number one player in the world rankings for golfers with disabilities. And it's a pretty big gap between him and the rest of the field. Popert was born with a form of cerebral palsy called spastic diplegia, which restricts the muscular movement in his legs. Growing up, Popert had 10 major operations and his legs and feet to improve pain and mobility. Now, it's just an incredible story of perseverance after each one of those surgeries, Popert had to relearn how to swing a club. His rise to world number one came last year when he shot a bogey free 66 at St Andrews to win the European Disabled Golf Association's Hero Open. And he's just wrapped up a stellar 2022 season on the Golf for Disabled World Tour. He won four times, including recently at the Andalusian Masters in Spain. So with that, I am so pleased to welcome in the world number one disabled golfer, Kit Popert. It is so good to see you. You have had a phenomenal and such a busy year playing all around the world with the G4D Tour, the RNA and USGA events. You've risen to the top of the world rankings. Just tell us a little bit about the journey that you've been on this year and how you've achieved such a high level of success. Um, yeah, so this year I had an operation at the end of last year. Um, and that I was getting really bad foot pain, so I had to sort that out. Um, started to play my first. I think I started to walk in maybe mid March and had my first England event in end of March. So I didn't have much of an off season last year. And then yeah, it's just snowballed. Um, I love competing. I love travelling, and it's just been great fun. And then how I got to this point was a lot of hard work and two very uh, supportive parents. Yeah, we'll dive into your story in just a minute. But, I mean, you've won four times this year on the G4D Tour, which runs alongside the DP World Tour. You've just won the 2023 season opener in Australia a few weeks ago. Your dominance just continues out on that tour. Give us a window into the level of competition and the opportunity that there is out there now for disability golf and the doors that are opening. Yeah, absolutely. I think the main thing is that it's all being televised. And so... I, I got into it maybe three years ago by watching it on TV. Um, and so, you know, we had the US Adapt USGA Adaptive Open this year. Um, and then obviously the G4D Tour and the DP World Tour um, just provides a lot of opportunities more so for other people with a disability that play golf to see that there's a pathway for them to play at a competitive level. Um, there's, you know, it's a global tour in the sense of there's uh, Curtis Barkley from Canada, Chris Biggins from the USA. Um, Brendan Lawler from Ireland, Juan Postigo from Spain, Tommaso Perina from Italy. There's, you know, there's, everyone's global and it's that's awesome. And it's, I think they said they've had a 20% uptake in uh, people with a disability applying for the world rankings. And so it's, this tour is only going to go from strength to strength and be, keep going and becoming more of a global tour. You're absolutely right. To have the spotlight on disability golf this year especially has been so much fun to watch. And, and let's just go back a little bit on your story. Back to life as a youngster, dealing with cerebral palsy. When and why did golf become a part of your life and what role did it play to begin with? Um, yeah, very simply. Uh, hey, that was an alright swing, though. Um, <laughs> very simply, um, my dad started golf when I was a kid and um i basically i have three other siblings all younger and so getting to spend four hours with him on the golf course at the weekend was very special just me and him and then i'm very competitive and i've always wanted to be a sportsman i guess and i've always wanted to be a golfer and i think i picked golf because i needed my legs a little bit you know i've always been i was always good at i used to hustle the pool tables at school and uh I, maybe i could have done that as a career but i i liked the fact that i needed to work hard with my legs in golf to achieve what i want to achieve um yeah so what challenges do you face within the game? What sort of adaptations do you have to make to any of the equipment? I think you have slightly altered shoes to help you play. Give us a sense mm -hmm. of, uh, of how you uh, deal with all that. Yeah, so uh, perching shoes has always been an issue. Um, I had a lot of deformities in my feet that I've had now corrected through operations. Um, and I have specialist orthotics in my shoes that basically allow me to use my calf muscles and um, walk more heel to toe because um, they raise my heel up. And yeah, for me, the challenges of the golf swing are, I struggle with a bit of rotation um, through the shot because of my hips and muscles being tight. So for people that don't know what cerebral palsy or the type I've got called spastic diplegia means is that it affects my lower legs or my legs and it um, means that my muscles are tight and contracted. So if your viewers were to do like a calf raise, that's how my calves are the whole time. Um, 
and that just means that walking a course can be tough and then also for me balance is an issue but the good thing is is once you make contact with the ball it doesn't matter where you finish <laughs> um, mm -hmm. because the ball's already gone so well, you've come so far, Kip. I mean, this year you were the first golfer with a disability to compete in the 127th Amateur Championship. Uh, what can you tell us about the journey that you took in qualifying and then ultimately teeing it up at Royal Lytham? Uh, yeah, so it was quite a tough decision. The, there's a tournament called the European Disabled Championship, and that's a team event. Um, so you have England, Ireland, Spain, all the countries playing against each other, and they have, I think, a team of four. And obviously I would have been um, one of the team for the England team. And the problem was, is that the Amateur Championship had just opened a pre-qualifying section and it was the same week. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's disability or golf or able-bodied golf. I've always said that week to week, I want to play the toughest event possible because um, I like a challenge. And so I had to forego my first ever England call up after working for 20 years really hard <laughs> to hopefully get one. Um, and it was the right decision for myself in the end because the England team finished third, so they didn't need me. And then uh, I managed to qualify for the Amateur Championship by driving. I live in the southeast of England, so I drove, I think it's like six hours up to Lytham, um, played the amateur qualifying, just qualified, and then obviously got into the amateur. Um, and it was an awesome experience and one I uh, really enjoyed. When you reach a certain level, Kip, you are wanted in multiple places and that you are. Now, you've had so many highlights this year, but I am sure one of them has to be at the Open Championship, the old course St Andrews, playing in part of that celebration of champions, teeing up alongside Tom Watson, Stuart Sink and Paul Laurie. You had your dad on the bag, who I know is pretty much your hero. Just talk us through that day and these moments. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. I mean, you've got Tom Watson stood right there. It didn't get much better. <laughs> no. Five-time Open champion. Um, and I was, honestly, I was just trying to be a sponge. You know, I, I truly believe that I can compete at that level. And I was just trying to take as much information off these guys as possible. Um, and yeah, it was awesome. I've always, you know, been hospital beds. I've always, I couldn't play tournaments as a kid. So I would uh, play them in my mind, as you will, um, just to keep me sane a little bit, I guess. And so it was awesome to finally be in front of, I don't know, let's say 40,000 people or however many were there. And I absolutely piped my first tee shot. Um, <laughs> right, I, I just picked a crane in the distance, hit it straight at it. And then Tiger Woods was the group behind me, I think. And I had 107 wind into and off the left on the first hole. And I hit a 50 degree to four feet. And, it, and then I woke up. It was just, it was awesome. <laughs> and as I say, to I think for me, the specialist moment is, you know, those pictures with my dad there and my dad just talking to John Daly, Nick Faldo, Tom Watson. I think for me, that was pretty cool. I'm very competitive. So for my first time at the Open Championship to be a celebration allowed me to really enjoy it and also to just have my dad on the bag and, you know, let him enjoy it. And it was really cool because next time I'm there, I'll be competing. <laughs> right, right. Memories of a lifetime, Kip. Your attitude is incredible. You are breaking boundaries uh, for the world of disability golf. And I have a feeling we are only just scratching the surface of what you're capable of. So we appreciate your time and it's great to hear you uh, from you and best of luck next year. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Appreciate it. OK, well, meanwhile, this week we have the PNC Championship coverage. We'll begin Friday on Golf Channel starting at noon with the Pro-Am and the tournament starts Saturday on Peacock at 1 p.m. before moving over to NBC at 2. And then on Sunday, golf starts at 11.30 Eastern on Peacock and heads over to Golf Channel at 12.30 and wraps up on NBC beginning at 1.30. NBC, Golf Channel and Peacock, your home for the PNC Championship all weekend long. Thanks, as always, for watching.